We have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone and could bring us some more aurora, an historic planetary conjunction, and we have some new bright regions that are rotating into Earth view and boosting the solar flux. Those stories are more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely keeping our interest. As we take a look at our front side sun, you can see this massive coronal hole. This thing has been rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the past couple days and sending us some fast solar wind. As a matter of fact, the fast solar wind from this coronal hole has already bumped us to active conditions over the last couple days a couple of times. And it's brought us some gorgeous aurora. We've seen aurora in Scotland. We've seen it in Canada. We've even seen some fleeting aurora clear down in South uh, North Dakota. Dakota. So, I mean, it's really giving us a decent chance for some shots down at mid latitude. So, aurora photographers continue to keep searching because this fast wind from this coronal hole will easily continue over the next couple days before things begin to settle down a bit. Now, on top of that, we also have old regions 27, 92, and 93. Those regions are rotating off of the sun's west limb. So, the solar flux has been kind of decaying over the past couple days, except for the fact that we've got it in the east limb. Take a look. We've got regions 27, 94, and 94, five rather. Those regions have now rotated into Earth view, and whammo, the solar flux has come back up. We're at the high 80s right now, which is almost in the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. And with the coming of some new regions that are on the sun's far side right now, we could see in the next few days jumping up to good radio propagation conditions. So, your amateur radio operators and emergency responders, keep your fingers crossed we could really start seeing that solar flux rise even more and just make life beautiful once again now we also have another small coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the earth strike zone here probably in the next oh maybe seven days maybe a little bit longer and that could give us yet another chance for um, aurora down at mid-latitudes but this will be a much more fleeting chance than the one that we're having right now so aurora photographers i tell you if you get a chance take advantage of it because it may be a little while before we see some decent solar storming again. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as you can see, we've actually been pretty low when it comes to the X-ray flux. We've been sitting a bit below the B floor, which means the solar flux has kind of dropped down a bit. We've actually been struggling around the mid to low 80s for a few days. But as of about the 19th, you can start seeing that X-ray flux rise. Even though it's been pretty flare quiet, you do see that rising. That was from region 2794 as it began to kind of rotate into Earth view. And sure enough, as it continues to rise, you start seeing a little bit of hash and a little bit of noise. That is from region 2794 really rotating into view and region 2795 as well. So you can see we've actually risen above the B floor in X-ray flux. This is also the reason why the solar flux has risen up to the high 80s. And with all the regions on the sun's far side rotating into Earth view here over the next few days, we could actually rise up into the 90s for solar flux. Now it doesn't look like we're going to see any real solar flare activity. Everything right now seems to be pretty flare quiet, so we're not going to have a risk for radio blackouts, but it is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders on Earth's day side. You don't have to worry about the radio blackouts, but you do get the uh, chance for decent radio propagation easily over this next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past week or so we've been pretty quiet. We've been hovering between quiet conditions to unsettled conditions, kind of up and down a little bit, but more quiet than unsettled really. Until about the 21st, you can actually see we started to rise and got to unsettled conditions and it's sustained that way until about the 22nd and then we bumped up to active conditions. All of this was due to that fast solar wind stream coming from that big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. And these conditions have continued. You can see on the 23rd, we once again hit more active conditions. So expect this to be sustained. So this means at high latitudes, we're getting some decent aurora show, especially in places like Norway and Finland. Oh my goodness, it's pretty crazy there. But we are actually getting pockets of fast solar wind that bump us up to active conditions, even down at mid latitudes. And that's why sporadically we're seeing uh, aurora, even in places as far south as like North Dakota. And this will easily continue over the next few days days uh, before things begin to settle down. So Aurora photographers, if you're adventurous, you can go out and chase. 
And although the solar storms have yet to really get underway when it comes to this new cycle, we are beginning to get some storms that are strong enough to bring us some of the beautiful coloring we expect during storm time aurora, especially when we see aurora views at high latitudes. So let me share a few of those with you right now. Some of these are from the recent storm that's occurring right now. So it's really fun to be able to share these. Like some gorgeous photos from Norway. Look at the reds in these photos. It's unbelievable. And we've had Aurora in Sweden. And it's been all over Scotland. And as we begin to move over the Atlantic, it was seen in Iceland. And as we move over uh, the Atlantic to the Western Hemisphere, it was also seen in many parts of Canada, Manitoba especially. Here's a few shots from there. And it was also seen in Saskatchewan. And it even dipped down in the United States. We saw it just fleetingly in North Dakota. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun. Yeah, just a little bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo A's view, you can see region 27, 92, and 93 as they rotate off of the west limb in Stereo's view. Now about center disk is where you see region 27, 94, and then right behind it, 27, 95, as it kind of pops and fizzles as it's beginning to grow. These are the regions that are really boosting that solar flux on Earth's day side. They're the ones that are the regions that are just beginning to rotate into Earth view right now. But look past them. On Stereo's east limb, you actually see a region in the north and a region in the south. And we're getting very anxious to see what these regions look like as they continue rotating into Stereo's view because those regions could boost that solar flux even higher. We may even get back to good uh, radio propagation on Earth's day with solar flux in the balmy 90s. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be nice again? So we're taking a look at that and we're paying attention to it. We also have a small coronal hole just ahead of region 2794. That small coronal hole is the one that could give us maybe a pocket of fast solar wind at mid-latitudes for a short while. We'll see whether or not we could get aurora down that far south, but it won't last very long. So aurora photographers, definitely take advantage of the fast one we have right now, because that's going to be the best chance to get to see aurora easily over the next week. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 30th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like maybe some aurora, or I don't know, maybe that historic planetary conjunction that is still ongoing and will continue easily through the rest of the year, you're going to have this bright companion to deal with. And by the way, that planetary conjunction, I know the peak of it was on the solstice right back on the 21st, but hey, those planets are still very closely aligned. So if you still want to catch it, it's not that hard. You just look about 45 minutes after sunset in the western sky, and now you'll see Jupiter and Saturn. But where Saturn used to be aligned just to the left of Jupiter, now it's actually going to be moving to the right of Jupiter, and it's going to be about the same height within the sky. And by Christmas, they'll be almost exactly the same level, but they'll still be within the width of the moon. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still getting that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone right now. We've been getting some decent aurora, especially at high latitudes, but we're in store for more. So at high latitudes, NOAA's expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 65% chance of a major storm, and that'll easily last in through this weekend. Now at mid latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 10% chance of a major storm. And again, these conditions will last easily through the weekend, which means we could have some Christmas aurora. So aurora photographers, this is a great happy holidays time to get some decent shots, possibly clear down to mid latitudes before things begin to settle down past the weekend and in through next week. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green right now when it comes to solar flares. We do have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and they are sunspot regions, but they're not flare active. So you GPS users, you should be very happy. We have no risk for radio 
blackouts on Earth's day side. But hey, we are getting a decent boost in the solar flux. We're now up into the high 80s for solar flux on Earth's day side, and we could be boosting up even higher than that over maybe, let's say, the end of the week or so. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you should be very happy. We're almost, we're hovering close to the good range in radio propagation on Earth's day side. So happy holidays. Enjoy. Now, also, because we are still climbing at a solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is excellent weather in time for the holidays. We have a massive coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone right now, and it's been sending us some fast solar wind, and it will continue to send us some fast solar wind easily over the next few days, and that includes Christmas time and, you know, all of the festivities through this whole weekend. So Aurora photographers, if you get a chance, Definitely get out there and get some shots, especially if you're at high latitudes and, you know, you adventurous types, even at mid latitudes, we do have a chance to get some aurora here and there over the next couple days. Now, also amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you know, we were thinking that solar flux was going to begin to tank a little bit and I was getting a little bit nervous, but thanks to the new regions rotating into Earth view right now, we're back up into the high 80s for solar flux and covering over, you know, just barely into the good range for radio propagation, which I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that that's going to happen over the next, I don't know, week or so. So this is good news for you as well over the holidays. You should enjoy some decent radio propagation on Earth's day side. So have a great time and be festive and merry, especially in this, you know, wild world of COVID that we've been dealing with over the past, you know, my goodness, I can't even remember life without COVID. Can you? I sure can. My goodness. Enjoy the, the extra communications that you're able to do and the DXing you're able to do over this next week. Now, also, we have um, and more regions that are going to be rotating on Earth's uh, day side over the next few days that could boost the solar flux even more. And we do have yet another a small coronal hole that's going to be rotating into Earth view. So both amateur radio operators and, and um, emergency responders and uh, uh, roar photographers, you have more chances over the next few weeks to have even better news. So let's hope that this all travels into the new year as well. And then on top of that, we also have that historic planetary conjunction. You know, just because it's not the solstice anymore and the planets are now beginning to move a little bit further away from one another, you can still catch that Christmas star as it's been called. You'll be able to see it in the western sky just after sunset and hopefully it will help inspire a better 2021. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.